Hello everyone, in the previous video we had uh, assigned the diaphragms for the slabs and these few steps for this video we will check the orthogonal effect and we will see how to apply the orthogonal effect in the static analysis on the building check orthogonal effect you have to apply the orthogonal effects on your model if you have one of these uh, points you can check uh, code uh, section 1633.1 section 1633.1 you have to apply the orthogonal effect if the project in one of these zones 2 3 and 4 our project is in zone 2.5 so we have to check these points the columns in our project are not included in the uh, lateral lateral force resisting system so we don't have to check for this uh, point uh, we have to go to table 16 M and check for uh, regularity type 5 and regularity type 1 table 16 and plan structure regularities type 1 and type 5 we can't check for torsional regularity before running analysis in etabs so we will uh, check for this type of re regularity later after running uh, analysis non-parallel systems the vertical lateral load resisting elements in our case the shear walls in our case the shear walls we don't have frames maybe in other buildings there are many other uh, resisting elements our in our case the shear walls are not parallel or symmetric about the major orthogonal axis of the lateral force resisting system ok in our case all shear walls are, are parallel to x and y so that we don't have this type of irregularity in our building, building. if you have an inclined shear wall or maybe frame then you have to uh, take into consideration the orthogonal effect go back to section uh, 1633.1 as we said the building is in one of these zones 2.5 we don't have uh, this type of uh, plan irregularity we, uh, columns are not included in uh, uh, resisting uh, lateral forces so that the st and uh, we will check for this point later on for type 1 of plan regularity so that so that for now we can uh, ignore uh, the orthogonal effects and load combinations what if we want to uh, consider the orthogonal effect then you have to take EQX 100% of EQX plus 0 0.3 of EQY and minus and here plus and minus and load combinations then copy the same load combinations and take EQ Y plus and minus 0 0.3 EQ X as we see you can take 30% 30, 30 of EQ without eccentricity this means the second direction the direction that you will take 30% uh, of it uh, you can ignore eccentricity and the main direction that you will take 100% uh, of it uh, you have to take the eccentricity into consideration that means you have to go in etabs define load patterns and delete this EQ and make a separated load pattern for each case 
x, x plus eccentricity, x minus eccentricity, y, y plus y minus eccentricity. For example, you can name it x without eccentricity. You can name it eq x and uh, y without eccentricity eq y for x plus eccentricity you can name it eq x1 or eq x plus or any name for example eq x1 and for minus eccentricity eq x2 and for y plus eccentricity eq y1 and y minus eccentricity eq y2 to take the orthogonal effect into consideration after uh, uh, defining these uh, load patterns go to define load combinations in each load combination you have to replace the eq we will see how to apply or to add load combinations later on uh, but uh, after adding load combinations, I will uh, assign the uh, EQ as the seismic force. Then, to take into consideration the orthogonal effect, replace each in each load combination. Uh, replace EQ with uh, these load combinations. EQ one plus thirty percent of EQ x without eccentricity eq y 1 minus 0 0.3 then minus eq y 1 plus 0 0.3 so you have to take plus and minus eq y 1 plus 0 0.3 and minus 0 0.3 and do this for all load patterns 0 0.3 plus and minus And that's it for the orthogonal effect and static procedure. We will see later on how to uh, apply the orth orthogonal effects while uh, uh, applying the uh, dynamic procedure, how to combine them using SRSS and we will see different uh, ways to uh, apply the orthogonal effect. I want to talk about EV, the vertical component of the earthquake ground motion while using the static procedure. Uh, as we see E, the earthquake load equal to rho, in our case rho equals 1. EH, uh, the earthquake horizontal for load or force. Uh, in static procedure, uh, we defined EQ in load, uh, in load uh, patterns uh, so we will add EQ in load uh, combinations uh, to as the seismic force this will represent the seismic static forces but we have to take into consideration EV in dynamic we can add a function that will represent uh, this uh, ground effect but in static you have to take it as as we see we have to take it as a percentage of the dead loads 0 0.5 cai times the dead loads we will see how to uh, apply this step in the next video